Lunchtime Live on News Talk. Brought to you by Avant Money. Think you're getting the best value from your bank? Think again. But we want to start with uh, Julia McAndrew, who's an Irish woman who's found herself in a really difficult situation in Mexico after flying there with her family and her son, Patrick. Uh, Patrick is with us on the programme. Do you mind, Patrick, just telling us about your mum's situation? Yes, my name is Patrick McAndrew. And I got in touch because I'm here in Mexico caring for my mum as she's going uh, through treatment for stage four cancer. And it came to us as a big surprise for her to receive this diagnosis here. And we have huge medical expenses, uh, which we have to pay for in an effort to try and get her health to a level where she can return to Ireland. So we created a fundraiser to try and support that treatment. And um, that's that's why we reached out, to try and uh, bring attention to that fundraiser. Can you tell us, Patrick, um, how long you're, 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 you are in Mexico with your mum? So we arrived. We arrived here just before Christmas, and we. I was. I was coming out here for work, and invited my mum and my sister to come with me uh, for a holiday. And as soon as we arrived, my mum fell ill. She fell ill where when we were arriving off plane into Mexico City, she struggled to walk very far after leaving the airplane, which was a huge surprise to us. This wasn't. She never had difficulties with uh, her energy or. You know, it was a woman that would often be out walking around in the parks in Ormor and Galway. And this was the first indicator that something was wrong because she had to ask for a wheelchair to bring her out of the airport, to take her from the airplane out of the airport. And there was just a progressive decline in her health over the following five months uh, once it got to a point where it was so severe that somebody had suggested that it could be cancer. And that's when we eventually went to visit an oncologist and got the, the news that it was stage four cancer. So your mum hadn't been sick at all, Patrick, prior to travelling to Mexico. No, no, she had no, she had no illnesses, um, nothing, nothing at all that was coming up that that led us to believe that this would have been an issue. So this is why it was so surprising, and also why when she got here, we kept thinking, oh well, you know, we'll just go and visit this particular doctor, and they will find the problem and we'll take care of it. So we were kind of extending her flight. And then the the lockdown was imposed uh, in Ireland, so we figured, okay, well, she'll just stay here. Um, we won't, she won't return to Ireland for a little while until that eases, and she'll just get this taken care of here. So we visited a gastroenterologist for because they thought it was acid reflux and things, issues with her stomach. Then we visited a kidney specialist. Uh, then there was a diagnosis of, of anemia, so we had to go and get that treated. And um, it was just a case of constantly thinking, OK, once we get to the next doctor, they'll figure out what it is and, and it'll be taken care of. But um, it just kind of kept ballooning and getting worse and worse. until, as I mentioned, we had to eventually meet the oncologist. You must have been absolutely floored, um, Patrick, when, you, when, when your mum got that diagnosis. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very tough. It was very tough. It was very tough because you have nothing to lean on. You have no sense of where to begin. You know, you're already in hospitals where you're trying to use Google Translate to communicate effectively with the doctors because we don't have, none of us have a great level of Spanish. Uh, so we're trying to use Google Translate and, and things are getting lost in translation. Then we're trying to look at how we can get her into different hospitals, um, trying to understand which hospitals are, are good to go to. Uh, so we're trying to lead on people that we know it was it was very difficult. It was very difficult and uh, challenging to figure out that whole process. And then on top of that, all the treatment that we were receiving was, if not in a private hospital, in a general hospital. But we're still paying for it. And um, yeah, to see to see those medical medical bills quickly quickly growing, and trying to figure out what the best course of action for her was, it was it was a difficult moment. Uh, at this point, we have a treatment plan in place, but for those first two or three weeks it was it was very stressful I must say the, the treatment I imagine Patrick must be extremely costly yes coming out to somewhere about 40,000 a month so 40,000 uh, do- do- dollars yeah, about US dollars yeah 40,000 US dollars a month um, and then with that you know there can be there can be added complications such as 
last week or two weeks ago, we had to move to a different hospital for uh, these specific blood transfusions. And just for one night's stay, that was over 5,000 US dollars. Um, so you you have you have a sense of what the, the cost of treatment will be, but then things show up uh, unexpectedly and that just uh, kind of adds to the, the medical bills which you had kind of planned for. So, yeah, it, it, it's very expensive. Um, and we're hoping that it will just be a number of months that she'll have to receive this treatment and then, and then we'll be in a position where she can actually return to Ireland. Is that your plan at the moment, Patrick, is to, I suppose, for your mum to, to go through her treatment there and then to, to come back and to, to fly home then, uh, fly home here to Ireland? Well, yeah, so the, the, the main issue now that we're facing is actually with her kidneys because she, the cancer was, it was a huge warning sign for us. It was a huge concern, something that had to be taken care of. But in the last number of weeks, the major issue has actually been her kidneys, even more so than the cancer, uh, because of how serious it's getting. So her kidneys are operating at about 17%, they think, 19%, they think. And um, that's, a lot of that is happening because the cancer is in the bone marrow, and that's affecting the functionality of the kidneys. So we have had to shift the kind of course of treatment to focus on that. And today she'll be receiving some stem cell therapy to try and rejuvenate the kidneys. So what we're doing at the moment is really just trying to focus on rebuilding her body whilst treating the cancer so that she can be in a place of more, greater strength and be able to face what is an extremely long journey, probably about 22 hours to get back to Ireland. And at the moment she's she's very weak. Uh, she's, she's lost a lot of weight, uh, about 24 pounds over the last three months. So we need to rebuild her body treat the kidneys, treat the cancer, and then get her in a position where she can return back to Ireland. And, and that's what we're trying to work mm. towards, which is which is why we've created this fundraiser to try and support those efforts. Was it only last December, Patrick, that you and your mum and sister travelled out? Yeah, just last December. Yeah, so just, just before seven, eight months ago? Yeah, yeah. And uh, like it's been a hell of a journey. Yeah, it really has. Um, and ha- had you, I mean, had you planned to to move there permanently for work initially? No, it was kind of a temporary thing, really. Um, a lot of my work is with people in the states. I had I had previously been living in New York, and I moved back to Ireland during COVID, uh, during during the, about a month, uh, two months after the pandemic. Um, and then I, I decided to relocate here, uh, so to relocate here for work, and uh, because all of my interactions there with people in the US, so I was in a similar time zone. And um, yeah, I was just planning to come here for six, eight months, possibly, uh, but it was kind of open-ended, and uh, yeah, then it, you know, everything changed. Everything yeah. changed. The whole, the whole plan, the whole set of expectations of what this is meant to be uh, changed within a couple of weeks of arriving here. And it's been continuously changing since then. It's been a really d- difficult couple of months. I mean, not like for your for your mom, and then for 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 you all, really. I mean, how you mentioned even the the language barrier, like how how difficult is it when you're there and you're in Mexico when you're trying to. to to deal with you know medical professionals, you've a language barrier, and just I suppose not having that support network that you know you'd often have from f- friends and family at home yeah it's difficult like it's 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 the really small things where you know when uh, was in a number of hospitals at the beginning where she was really kind of confined to the bed and if she wanted to press a buzzer to call in a nurse uh, they would arrive and they would ask her what she needed and they wouldn't speak english and she wouldn't speak spanish and there comes you know a bit of a dance and that's that's difficult when you're in a place where you really just need care. Uh, you really just are. She was in such a low state, and and then also you're just trying to make sure you know because as as we know when you're getting treatment you have to question things. You have to question things to make sure that the right treatment is being received, that it's it's necessary, it's adequate, and it, that just became difficult. Um, so it, it's a it's a point of frustration at times, but. Google Translate, as I said, becomes a very reliable tool uh, where you go back to that again and again. And it mm. doesn't make the line of communication flow so freely, but you do at least get to get your message across. So we're lucky to have that uh, because that's what we've essentially been depending on a lot of the time. Uh, there, for sure, are some people who will speak English that we can communicate with, but 
uh, more often than not, uh, we have to rely on using something or just our broken Spanish to try and get by. And um, and that can be the most difficult part because yeah. you then don't have a huge amount of certainty that what you're saying is being communicated effectively and you, you're trying to make sure that no mistakes are happening or that there's nothing lost in translation. So that for sure was a, was a challenge mm, and in some ways can continue to be a challenge. You, you've launched a GoFundMe campaign to try and um, raise money for your, your mum's treatment and obviously as well to look your trying to build up her strength so she can she can endure the flight the, the long flight back to to Ireland how's the campaign going at the moment Patrick it's, it's been it's been amazing it's been really incredible to see the support that we've received we have received so much support from people back in or more in Galway where we're from and, and the broader county in Mayo where my mum is originally from and people have been uh, putting in all sorts of efforts to raise funds uh, beyond just the campaign by some people have been creating art pieces and selling them um, in the name of my mum. Uh, my, some of my sister's friends have, have started uh, a, a, a fundraiser of the month of July called 100 Kilometers for Julia. So 100 km for Julia. If you search that on Instagram at 100 km for Julia or Facebook, you can see it. Um, and what they're doing is trying to run, walk, swim or cycle 100 kilometers of the month of July and you will share and track that and then uh, encourage people to donate towards mum's support, the fundraiser for it. So, um, yeah, it's been incredible to receive all the different levels of support, even considering the the difficulty of, of gathering or anything, the limitations which are placed on that with the restrictions at home. People have still been communicating and sharing this virtually. Mm. And it's been an incredible sense of it's given her, my mom and us a great sense of courage and pride in many ways to see the, the enduring support from so far away. And it fills us with a huge amount of joy when we oftentimes get together and see the people who have donated and shared their messages and, and reached out with yeah. words of support. And it really emboldens us to say, you know, not alone are we doing this for for her, you know, working towards and she's doing this for her very own health, but as, as an added motivation to to be thankful and to bring something positive back to those mm. who have been so kind in supporting us. So it's it's really shown the power of community and uh, and what what can happen yeah. when you have to call on people like that in times of need. If people want to to donate to contribute to help out or to get in touch, Patrick, can you give us the the name of the GoFundMe site? Yeah, so we've we've made it somewhat easy that if you just search, if you just type in supportjulia.ie, so that's supportjulia.ie that will direct you directly to the uh, to the GoFundMe page and okay. from there um, from there you could you can make a donation and you can support and uh, any amount has a hugely positive impact on uh, the treatment that we're getting because it, it really all compounds and comes together to help us uh, because we're it's, it's as I said it's about 40,000 a month uh, which we have to go through we've, we've completed the first month and now we're into the second month and, and we will probably be here for a, a, at least a couple more months beyond this Patrick I, I wish your mum and uh, and you and your sister um, all the very best I, I know you have a, a you know you have a hard and a tough couple of months ahead of you but look thank you very much for getting in touch with us and for joining us here on Lunchtime Live and hopefully there's listeners out there today that look if they want to to um, to support and to, to get in touch they can do so as you said on the website um, support uh, Julia uh, .ie, and you'll be able to get more details Patrick McAndrew thank you for joining us here on the programme Thank you so much Andrea Lunchtime Live on News Talk. Brought to you by Avant Money. Think you're getting the best value from your bank? Think again.